Tony here. So most people use SideQuest to install games, sometimes they use it to install external APK files, but there is a lot more to SideQuest than meets the eye. We're going to explore these icons up here that will allow you to do many things with your Quest, such as alter the texture quality in your games to make them look better and cast your headset wirelessly to your desktop. All this and more coming up. First off, this channel reached a huge milestone recently, over 1,000 subscribers, and I'd like to thank everyone who's watched, liked, and shared my videos, and particularly those who have subscribed. Without you, this channel wouldn't be able to continue. So a big, big thank you to each and every one of you. Now, because of the lack of news this week, I won't be doing my weekly Quest Digest, just because it would be a very short video, and I wouldn't want to put something out there that I wasn't happy with. So I thought I would put my time into doing this video instead, and Quest Digest will be back next week. And if you haven't checked out my channel already, do have a look. I think I have some videos on there that you might enjoy. Now the first step, we have to turn our Quest on and connect it to our computer. We also have to have SideQuest installed. I'll have a link to a video in the description that will show you how to do that if you don't have it installed already. Now first we're going to check out the device and settings tool. So with your headset connected, go into here. Now the settings I'm going to show you can enhance the performance of your Quest, but in doing so, it can put your Quest under more stress, which can cause it to get hotter and heat up faster, drain the battery quicker, cause some games to stutter or lag if the settings are too much for the Quest to handle, and can cause your Quest to combust. Okay, I'm only joking about that last one. Just bear in mind that some of these settings can push the Quest a little bit further, place it under a bit more stress when changed. The other thing to remember that when you restart the Quest, all of these settings go back to default. So if you want to use them again, you'll have to apply them again inside Quest whenever you restart your device. So with that out of the way, the first one we're going to explore is the Guardian. We can turn that on or off. Now the Guardian is this net grid system that you see here. It's a safety feature that marks the edges of your play space. So if you do turn it off, just be careful. We can also change the FFR or fixed foveated rendering. Now what is this? Well I'll show you. It's named foveated rendering because of an area in the eye called the fovea. It makes the outer edge of the image pixelated and fuzzy whilst the center of the image is quite sharp and clear. Because our peripheral vision isn't great we don't notice that pixelation so much and it saves on processing power. So the higher the foveated rendering the more pixelated those edges are going to be and the better performance you're going to have. Whilst if you turn that foveated rendering low or off, you're going to get less pixelation, a better quality image, but that's going to come at the cost of performance. Another option here we can change to make our games look better is the texture size. Now that ranges from default all the way up to 3072. With texture quality increasing, the higher you go. So what you're seeing here are the default textures for Robo Recall. Now let's compare the default texture setting to the highest texture setting in SideQuest. And there are some noticeable differences. When looking at this yellow robot, I can see the textures seem sharper and crisper with the 3072 setting compared to the default. And when we compare the 512 setting, the lowest setting, to the 3072 setting, you can see there's a huge difference there. Now there is another option to increase the processing and graphics power of the Quest. I'm playing this Super Smash Brothers demo on my Dolphin emulator on the Quest and to be honest increasing the graphical and processing power to the higher setting didn't really make much of a difference. They both run at about 40 frames per second. So I thought I'd also test out some of these settings while playing Robo Recall. You see some stats up here, the ones I'm going to focus on are FPS, frames per second, CPU U and GPU U which stands for how much the central processor is being used and how much the graphics processor is being used to run the game. So this is Robo Recall running on the default setting, if we change the textures to the highest setting of 3072 we see that the frames per second drop below half it makes it almost unplayable as it's a pretty laggy experience and if we look at the graphics processing that's where the quest seems to be struggling as we seem to be pushing the gpu pretty hard and if i turn the gpu and cpu up to level 4 on side quest it doesn't seem to make much difference either we're still getting the same kind of frame rates 
Now, of course, you're going to get different experiences using these settings with different games, but I found for Robo Recall, having it at the highest FFR, with a texture size of 2048 gave me frames per second hovering around the 50 mark that's probably the highest i'd be willing to go i might even drop that down one in texture quality just to give me a bit better performance now if you like to record footage from your quest full rate capture helps improve the quality of that recording it allows you to record in a full 60 or 72 frames per second as opposed to the 30 frames per second you get by default. This will make everything you record smoother, but the video files will also take up more of your hard drive space. We can also make the video capture size a full 1080. So if you've ever recorded footage using your Quest, you know that it looks a bit like this. By enabling 1080, it allows you to capture footage in this widescreen aspect ratio. Next we'll take a look at the streaming options that SideQuest offers. If you go back to our toolbar in the top right hand corner, you'll see a screen with a play symbol. Click on that and you'll be presented with a few options. Now these options I generally leave as default as I find they work just fine, but I'll go through them and show you what they do. The first option is fairly straightforward, it makes the window always on top on your screen. Now looking at the bitrate, this affects the quality of the video stream. So if I change it to 100,000 bits, you see the quality isn't great. If I leave it on default 8 million bits, the quality is vastly improved. And if I put it to 32 million bits, it's about the same. So I tend to leave it at 8 million bits per second. We have a full screen option. We also can change the maximum frames per second and the maximum size of the streaming window. So zero is unlimited. This is the default setting. But if I change it to 500, then that shrinks the streaming window down in size. Now some advantages to streaming like this, you can record things you wouldn't normally be able to record using your Oculus Quest headset. So if you go into Oculus TV, I'm accessing RetroArch here and in the headset it just cuts the recording. But of course when I'm streaming it through SideQuest, I'm still able to stream and record the footage. Now if we go to this enable wireless mode function, we can also stream and access our headset wirelessly. So first make sure your headset is connected to your computer via a cable, then click connect and you'll see it's attempting to connect right now. It's connected. I take the cable out, it says it's not detected for a moment and then it will reconnect via wireless. So now I'm accessing my Quest wirelessly and streaming it wirelessly. You'll see that the streaming experience isn't as smooth as when I connect it via cable. This is probably in part due to my Wi-Fi connection. So I personally tend to only stream and record footage when using a cable. It's just more reliable that way, less things can go wrong. But if I'm showing someone a game, then I'll stream it wirelessly because if there is some lag or it drops out, then it doesn't really matter as much. Next, we'll take a look at this folder symbol, which allows us to manage the files on our headset. So in case we wanted to back up some files, say this ROMs folder here, I can click that disk symbol, select the location on my computer and save that to the PC. I can also download and save my various screenshots and video files that I've recorded using the Quest. And when I'm done, I can also delete them so they don't take up space in my Quest storage. And if you want to download all of your screenshots and recordings at once, hit that plus button in the bottom right hand corner and you have an option to do that. You can also upload files to your Quest. So let's go into the Quest Z Doom folder. Let's say I want to upload a WAD file. I can go in the plus symbol again, copy a file to this folder. It will take me to the default location. I just find the files that I want and I can upload them to my Quest. Now finally, we'll explore the currently installed apps function. So if you go into here, you'll see all of your apps. Now you can click the cog symbol and that enables you to do various things such as backing up the APK file, backing up game data, uninstalling the app if you want. And we can also install home environments. So here's the home environments that come with the Quest. And here are some custom home environments. I cover these in a separate video and how to install them uh, in that separate video. So if you're interested in doing that, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Well, that's just about it for this video. I hope this helped you learn a bit more about SideQuest, what it has to offer, and you found it useful. Do remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.